Well, my name is Mark Boucher. I'm a technical sales representative for the Carl Zeiss Corporation, and I'd like to welcome you to your demo. We'll be taking a look at a product called Calypso for the measurement of prismatic and freeform geometry. Beginning with the empty desktop, we'll give our program a name. This is how it'll be stored on your server, so the name should be a Windows legal file name. Calypso's CAD engine is from a company called Spatial Technologies, a Dassault company, the largest CAD company on the planet. In addition to handling neutral formats such as SAT, IGIS, and STEP, we can handle in direct imports from many popular CAD programs. From the very beginning, we'll notice some differences in the way Calypso is programmed. In many CMM programs, the operators begin by thinking about alignments, spatial rotations, zero points, things like that. With Calypso, we're going to think about metrology. The CMM only does three things, size, form, and location. In other words, how big is it, where is it, what's it look like? From a series of pull-down menus, we'll select the characteristics that are described on the print. One of the things I like to do is make a user-defined toolbox. This toolbox may contain the 10 or 12 characteristics that I typically measure for my process. Each characteristic is an object. These objects contain all of the information necessary for the evaluation. In other words, they represent the feature control frame found on the print. In this case, flatness. We select the surface, put in a tolerance zone, and it is completely programmed. The probe path will follow a set of rules that I have set up in advance. Moving on to angularity, we'll select the considered feature, the reference feature, we'll enter a tolerance zone, and that is completely programmed. Once again, Calypso follows datum reference frame thinking. In other words, the spatial orientation of the reference feature, a tolerance zone built at a nominal angle, that the considered feature will be evaluated too. True position, true position of a bore, the maximum inscribed circle, the outer tangential plane, and minimum circumscribed pins. Everything is calculated and evaluated to the all important functional fit. What if we had other true position characteristics that follow the same set of rules? By leaving the position characteristic highlighted, we can select the paintbrush tool. We can then apply the same tolerance zone, same datum reference frame, same evaluations to these additional bores. The paintbrush tool could be used for any characteristics, allowing for fast and efficient programming. Well, we've got a good program underway, but we all know that uh, sometimes things get a little bit more complicated. Often we need constructions, such as symmetries, uh, intersections, and maybe gauge diameters. Let's take a look at how that is accomplished with Calypso's characteristic-based programming. The evaluation in this case is the distance from the intersection of the main bores to the front face. What characteristic do we need? Well, I hear the word distance, so we're going to open up our Cartesian distance. We can't click on the first object, so we're going to say it's something new and select intersection. We then say the intersection of what? Well, let's click on a cylinder and extract that. For the next one, let's make it a little more complicated. Rather than a single cylinder, let's intersect to a line running down the center of the part. To do that, we'll create a 3D line. We'll select the two bores that are going to make that line up, the front and the back. And then we're going to recall them into an axis. Click OK to the 3D line. It fills the template out and the intersection point appears on screen. We're always going to get visual feedback with Calypso. Clicking OK to this window, we'll then select the front face, 
The program is complete. The axis, the intersection point, and all features used are displayed on screen. In a similar manner, highlighting the entire characteristic list will highlight all features and constructions used in the program. Up to this point, we haven't really been concerned about selecting the correct stylus. From the measurement plan editor, we can see stylus 3 was selected for the entire program. We could, at this point, highlight a few individual features and make corrections. But wouldn't it be easier if we let Calypso automatically assign the correct stylus to each feature? Opening the editor up again, we'll see that now all the correct styli have been assigned. Calypso does this by looking at the vector of each feature, the vector of available styli, and making automatic selections. Our program is almost complete, but this red button at the top tells me a couple more things need to be done. One of those is the base alignment. The base alignment identifies where the part sits in the volume of the CMM. We can click on this face here. Calypso says, what could that be used for? Well, that might be the spatial rotation and the X origin. Clicking on one of the pins and it becomes the Y and Z origin. And the final pin becomes the rotational element. If we said OK, it would move the CAD model origin to this new position. It would all still work, but we just irritate the CAD guy. So we're going to say, let's calculate the offset and rotation to put the origin back in the proper position. Finally, there's the question about how we're going to move the stylus system and the probe head around the part during the CNC run. Calypso's intelligent motion processor and clearance plane technology will be handling all navigation automatically. Additionally, Calypso will look for the shortest path. In other words, reassigning clearance planes for the least amount of movement. Let's get ready to run our part in simulation. Although not required, it is possible to load fixtures, qualification spheres, probe racks, any object that might present a challenge to navigation. Starting the simulation option, we'll be able to model not only the probing system but the CMM as well. The Calypso simulation option also comes with the stylus system creator. This contains the entire Zeiss stylus catalog, as well as the ability to use generic or special order styli. Once complete, a stylus system list is created. Let's run our program in simulation. Opening the standard run window, we see that we can run all characteristics or an individually selected characteristic. Beginning with the base alignment, we're measuring an outer tangential plane, the same plane I would get if I laid this on a surface plate. That's followed by a minimum circumscribed pin for rotation and the YZ origin. With data may measured, the flatness is complete. This is followed by angularity. Angularity is the outer tangential plane to the minimum element of the considered feature. Next, true position. Maximum inscribed bore, outer tangential plane, minimum circumscribed pins. Unlike checking a feature to a Gaussian or best fit calculation, with Carl Zeiss and high data density, we'll be able to determine the functionality of the part to see if it will be performing as designed. And finally, keep in mind that all navigation was handled automatically by Calypso's intelligent motion processor. Calypso is an object-oriented program. In other words, each characteristic as an object can be reordered, dragged, and dropped to any place in the program. 
a group of characteristics might be highlighted and stored as a mini plan. These mini plans may represent several process operations. It makes it convenient to run any operation in the future, but not only that, it allows you to maintain one program instead of several pieces of code. At runtime, we'll have the opportunity to run not only all characteristics, current selection, but a new pull down window shows the mini plans that are stored. We'll now see Calypso running in an entire different order. Each object is really a CNC program containing all of the information necessary for the run and evaluation. Let's take a look at Profile. First is Profile of a Line. For this, the Calypso Curve option is required. For Curve, we'll need the nominals, in other words, X, Y, Z, and vectors. This might be from a text file, reversed engineered from a master part, or as in this case, from a CAD section of the model. Here, we're using the Plane Section tool. Also possible is a cylinder section. An example for this might be uh, sectioning the pitch diameter of a rotor. After sectioning, we can turn off the CAD model and then hold the Alt key on the keyboard boxing the splines of interest for selection. Enter the number of nominal points required and press curve to create the feature. From the Form and Location pull-down, we'll select Profile of a Line. Open the characteristic, select the curve. Next, we'll enter the datum reference frame by selecting the features from the model, a tolerance zone, and the Profile of a Line is complete. Various profile evaluations are selected from a pull-down menu. Next, let's look at profile of a surface. For profile of a surface, Calypso can use regular geometry, such as planes, cylinders, cones, or it can use the freeform surface option. After selecting freeform surface inside the profile characteristic, we'll open up strategy and define the probe path. There are several options for defining the stylus path. We can graphically section the model. We might highlight four points to define a grid. We might use a model surface. Or we can actually read in a text file of specific points you wish to measure. In this case, the section path, 
we'll see that all nominals and vectors come directly from the CAD surface. In this case, the four-point grid, we might edit the corner points to cover a specific area of interest for evaluation. The color of the grid displayed on screen shows the scan path with the scan beginning with the red colored arrows and finishing up with the blue. The entire path can be highlighted, grabbed with the mouse and dragged to any other point on the surface. Likewise, any individual point can be dragged and moved as well. This way the scan path can be altered to handle complex objects. As the control points are moved, notice that their vector always stays normal to the CAD surface. These on-screen arrows are really control points for the scan. The actual scan path speed and data density is entered separately. After the freeform surface is defined, we'll return to the profile template. With profile and freeform surface, it is possible to use no datum reference frame. In other words, fitting the data with six degrees of freedom. We might use a single plane. In other words, pitch and roll in translation in one direction. As each datum is entered, more degrees of freedom are constrained. Finally, entering the tolerance zone and the profile of a surface is complete. with detailed data for the metrologist to color-coded records for conformance Calypso offers a wide variety of both standard and customized reports from simple line scans to the on-screen display of deviations Carl Zeiss and high data density will help you understand your process all reports could be printed, automatically stored as PDF files, or as a standard part of Calypso, we can populate an Excel spreadsheet of your design, storing it anywhere on your network with an incremental part number. With the Carl Zeiss PyWeb Flex Reporter, we have removed all limitations in the design of custom reports. This interactive web-based tool allows for the easy retrieval of both statistical and historical information. With PyWeb, reports unique to your industry can be designed, automatically populated, and archived.